Hello everyone! Good morning, good afternoon, or good night. Greetings and salutations from Teacher Mark. Hello! Yeah. Hi! Yes, yes, I'm fine too. Just working. <laughs> Guys, I'm very glad to see you here one more time. Um, I hope you're doing your homework. Are you doing so right? And remember we have some reading practices with the Marys. Are you practicing your reading? Mm? So today's lesson is the third session, okay? And now let's just remember what we just saw during the last class, okay? So previously we were talking about the Sorry, the, the second conditional. Yes. If you remember well, we have the second conditional, uh, we have the main clause, and we have the result clause. In the case of the second conditional, we are talking about future or imaginary situations, things that are almost impossible or things that are difficult then to happen. Okay? Now, also during the last class, we learned about the compound words, which, very simple, they are just words that are made from two words, or more words, in some cases. For example, supermarket, super and market together. And that makes a compound word, supermarket, we have a lot of them. So today we're going to continue with our class, and the objective of today's lesson is defining relative classes. So, guys, pay attention. Before starting, you will need your notebook, your pencil case, because you need to take notes. So open your notebook and go to the grammar section. And as we, as you watch the video, you please uh, take your notes. So before starting the topic, if you open your notebooks and if you go back to the beginning of the course, you will see the spidergram, you will find the pronouns. We're going to focus on this course and three principle defining relative clauses, which are who, which, and that. These are the basic ones, okay? For example, who who is only used for people, which normally is used for objects or things, and that is used for things, objects, and also people. So, which and that can also be used for, uh, for both objects. Now, what is a defining relative clause? Well, practically, they explain which person or thing is being talked about. They tell us essential information about a noun. This is very important because in the future you will see that there exist uh, other clauses which are called non-defining relative clauses and they are a little bit different. I'm going to give you some examples. The woman who lives next door is a doctor. Here we have a woman. So, I am pointing out the, um, the nouns, okay? So you can see the noun in bold, and then after, just right after the noun, we have the correspondent defining relative clause. In this case, who? Tom Holland is the actor who played Spider-Man. So again, who is used for people, okay? Now, which is used for objects. For example, these are the books which I bought yesterday. Now, now here we have some of my favorite books, which I really love. If you read these books, I would be really surprised. <laughs> Another example. Ave works for a company which makes shirts. And here we have some of the shirts. Wow, they're pretty nice, right? If you got one of these shirts, 
you will look very cool. <laughs> They're nice, right? If you want one of them, just tell me and I'll contact you with the person. Now, that. That is used for or things or, or even people. For example, the camera that cost $3,000 is incredible. Now, I hate advertisements that don't tell the truth. Here we have some examples, you know, I really hate them. Now, which and that can be used for, for things, people, and also animals. Yes, for example, that is the cat, which or that I adopted. And look, this is my cat. <laughs> Oh, he's beautiful, right? His name is wrong, by the way. Hey, Mark, why are we using which or that and not who? Well, but in English, animals are considered as objects. I mean, not literally, they are objects. No, no, no. I mean, only grammatically. And that's the dog which... That bit me. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, he bit me. So, I'm going to explain something. In this sentence, the cat, the noun, is the object. I am just mentioning that this is my cat. It's just there. He's not doing anything. In these cases, I can take out which or that. Okay? So I have... That's the cat I adopted. You see? Now, that's the dog which bit me. So in this case, the subject, which is the dog, is doing an action. This dog bit me. Bit me is the action. So in this case, I can't take out the relative clause. I can't. If if the subject is an object, then I can take it out. Do you want another example? Okay, in this sentence, these are the new sneakers that I told you. And here we have the sneakers. The sneakers are the object of the sentence. I am just mentioning them, but they are not doing any action. So I can take out that from it. So I can say, these are the new sneakers I told you. It's very simple. Now, there is another use for defining relative clauses. They can also be used to join two sentences together. For example, my neighbor's pet has escaped. Okay? My neighbor's pet is a snake. Look, here we have the snake. My neighbor, whose name is Jaimito. My neighbor's pet, that is a snake, has escaped. All right, so let's go now to the student book. Here we have new things from old ones. In exercise one, read the extract from the article about Burio. Answer the questions. So this is the explanation about the defining relative clauses. They got together with a friend who also loves the ocean and surfing, Kevin Ahern. Borio has set up a fishnet recycling program that makes it easy to get rid of old nets. Borio has a factory in Chile, which turns the old nets into plastic material to make skateboards. So in each sentence, what noun does the pronoun in bold refer to? Answer the question, guys. Very good. Who refers to a friend? That is referring to a recycling program. And which, if you pay attention, it's referring to a factory. Please underline the next, the following lines. The final relative clauses explain which person or thing is being talked about. And a relative pronoun is not needed when it is the object of the relative clause. In the exercise 2, 
we have to put the defining relative clauses in the correct places to complete the sentences. I will give you some minutes to complete this. Um, with everything you know, you will be able to answer. Very good, let's just check our answers, guys. Here we have the answers for this exercise. I hope you just got it very good. Let's continue on exercise three and four. Um, we're going to read something about Erika Domsek. She's a designer who runs the PS I made this website. She has been called the queen of the do-it-yourself movement because she encourages and inspires people around the world to rely less on store-bought merchandise and more on their own inner creativity and skill to make things they need in their lives. Read the paragraph and pay special attention. Remember, remember, for example, in the first one, when there is an object, in this case, the 10 billion kilograms of old clothes and material, it's just mentioned. It's the object. So you don't need that verb. Complete the exercise, please. I will give you some minutes. And also to complete the exercise number four, um, there you have to only, where it's necessary, use the relative pronouns. So let's check your answers here. Very good. That's it. Now in the exercise number four. Very good. All right, so now exercise five. Look at all the list of words associated with stores and shopping. Use sentences with defining relative clauses to say what each thing is. Use your dictionary if necessary. Here, you will need a dictionary, guys. You have the option to use an online dictionary, or if you prefer, if you have a normal dictionary, physical dictionary, it's just fine. All you have to do is to look up there at the meaning of the words and try to adapt them to the relative clauses. For example, a customer is a person who buys something in a store. I'm going to help you with another one. A credit card is a small plastic card you can use to buy things. Okay? It's very simple. Do this in your notebook, please. Okay. Wow, we are reaching to the end of our lesson. In the exercise eight, you are free to choose one of the activities. Um, I'd selected the first one because I want to talk to you about a person that I really admire. His name is Theo Jensen and he is a kinetic sculptor. <laughs> Theo Jensen is a physicist who I admire because he creates beautiful machines made out of plastic and recycled materials. He believes art and engineering, which are necessary for his crafts, can be found together. If I were a scientist, I would be like him. He inspires me to pursue the art and perfection in my job. My name is Theo Jensen. I'm a kinetic sculptor. My sculptures are made of very light materials and they are powered by the wind. A part of me is an engineer who wants to map the progress of mobility. Another part is an artist who wants to sculpt the air that surrounds us and give it shape. And always I strive to push the boundaries of what we know and what seems possible to us at this moment in time. The walls between art and engineering exist only in our minds. We just reached the end of the lesson. For homework, you will have the verb of pages 92 and 93. Okay. I hope you have a great weekend guys and please take care, see you the next time and do your homework, goodbye!